welcoming to the whole Open Source Bridge. This is the interview portion, Strange Love Lives, doing interviews, I'm doing interviews. This is day two of Open Source Bridge. And right now we're joined by volunteer Scott Deckelman. Yeah. Hello, you, oh. we just showed That's us the, right. the back of your this. badge. Yeah. Just saying, so you're a volunteer today. You should be off doing something else. Yes. But you're a volunteer today for an interesting reason. Why are you one of the volunteers today? Well, I really probably don't even deserve the title of volunteer. Because you're just wandering around. I'm wandering watching. around. Yeah, this is my wife organized this uh, mm -hmm. conference. She came up with this conference. Uh -huh. And um, I want to actually see what she does. Mm -hmm. So So this is one of the first time that you've seen the other side of what it is that she's doing. Not yeah. the chicken raising at home. Right. Selena. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. How's it, how's it going? With the chicken raising, well, no, we just got no, two new ones. No. But, How's okay. it going? Well, uh, those will be dead. Okay, okay. I'm not trying to be a pessimist, but I know what happens with your chicken. Yeah, yeah. Um, how's it going here? Yeah, it's really nice. To like, I mean, I got to meet some of the people last night at the party. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's always sort of strange. You, you, my wife has all these men, you know, in her life uh -huh. that are like That's really what interesting. That's happens when you're a woman in the tech world. You, oh. you collect men it's, everywhere. Yeah, it's like you know. You know, if it's if a first female president, you have that male sort of vice president. It just kind of feels weird. Like, what am I doing over here in the corner? That's uh -huh. what I feel sometimes. But you have to just get in there yeah. and talk to people, and they're not that weird. No. It's just it's a little different. They're, no, they're not. That, they're, they're a little not. weird. They are. It's okay. The Portland okay. tech community is a little. Strange. Yeah, you know, you have to just kind of get in there and start yeah. chatting it up. And after you talk for a while, they they loosen up. They loosen up. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk to you, <laughs> outsider. Yeah. So. So what are you playing hooky from to come watch the? I am day? a high school teacher. Uh, in the area. We've and decided that you're not a teacher, though. We've oh, yeah, I'm an educator. An educator. I educate where I go. Yes. I've, I, mean, I hope this is educational for you. <laughs> yes. I'm being educated. Right, I learned right. that you got two new chickens. Yes, I did. I just went and picked them up. Yeah? Yeah. So a little black one, a little white one. So do you want to, what, what do you teach? Oh, I teach, uh, like, social studies uh -huh. and uh, global studies, newspaper, journalism, mm -hmm. psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're just all over the board yeah. there, aren't you? I get to teach debate next year. I'm excited about that. Never done that before either. You're just no. a pinch hitter, like, oh, what? we need someone to teach something. Get yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. I'm mean, not, yeah. okay, I'm not sure if I'm qualified. I'm going to look at the card now. We've, okay. we've done some of this. So aside from that, aside from all that, you're actually also an amateur media maker. Sure. So why do we specify media maker instead of oh, filmmaker? Oh, I don't know. That's, that's a good question because I, mean, I used serious. to do, I've done a, some short films about you know, six years ago, I did a few short films with Super 8, actual film. Okay. But I think I like like the flips and things like that now, and that feels less like film and more like okay, so things. It's, you're just, no, I'm you're artsy just fartsy, but I'm not. You're uh, just specifying. Yeah. I used to make film. Media maker sounds cooler, like I educator. Used to make film. Yeah. I, well, I don't know, because a filmmaker is a yeah. dying breed. Right. They are. I mean, right. how many people, I mean, you've got the big, huge movie companies, and yeah, all this stuff. Right. But, but who locally, you know, there's not a lot of, oh, I have... That's super great. I've got right. a film camera. I'm right. going to go around and film things because yeah. it's cost prohibitive, yeah. among other things. Right. And that's what I, I, I'm interested in doing, like little short pieces now, get mm -hmm. people. And um, I've had a couple of experiences doing some flips, flip videos uh, when I was in Washington, D.C. over the inauguration. And I was just really impressed how um, when you take away the buffer of a big camera yeah. and you don't have that on, and how people, if you're just, you can make eye contact, how you can get completely different. Um, uh, answers and um, and sharing and then what I was able to do in DC was you know on a subway train on the way to the inauguration ask my one question yeah. and then pass the camera to the next person have them ask cool. the same question and we saw like these people who are sort of quiet in their sort of you know space where they're just going to this event they're excited but they yep. just are still in the subway which is the rules are you know yes don't in talk the subway, you behave yourself you behave yourself and, you put and your these, headphones in right and suddenly young and old you know people from all cultures were suddenly just talking mm -hmm. and we were all laughing like collectively and i just saw the power of uh vid and media to do that it isn't just um you know kind of like open source it's not this doesn't have to be this top-down thing where I'm the director and I'm going to decide how everything is edited and put together. Yeah. It can be live. It can yeah. be, you know, I'm just going to do this little piece and you get to be part of it too. And um, I like that. I like that you worked in the open source angle. That was <laughs> really good. I'm trying. I you was know. like, dude, he's just flipped that in. <laughs> Educate. I'm, I'm a teacher. Sometimes you have to, you know, <laughs> oh gosh, what am I going to teach? <laughs> I've got to work you know, five minutes. <laughs> so how long have you been making media? Short films, uh, media? Yeah, I, I think um, it started... You know, I studied uh, journalism and advertising in college, and so we'd make little short films right out of college. And uh -huh. then um, and then when I was sort of in, you know, 2000, 
three, two thousand. A lot of videos for friends, and then actual ones were, you know, could get screened around in this neighborhood. Um, was around two thousand four and two thousand six. So, yeah. And are you still making them? Yeah, it just got harder when I went went back to school to be a full time teacher. So yeah. it drains a lot of the creative energy. But that's you got to find you got to find time. I ask this because, see, this is one of my projects. I have another project yeah. that I do. It's called Thirty Hour Day. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm going to talk about my other project now. It's in a month. You guys just have to deal with this. Um, and and we do 30 hours of live stream content and raise oh, money wow. for charities. And we're looking for that. short films. Oh, really? Yes. I would love to. I, things where you just are forced to do stuff is the best. Like the, yeah. the, the two short films that I've shown in Portland were things where you had to make it in three weeks. Uh -huh. and you, you, had got to, a, you got about three weeks to get it to me. Oh really? Yeah. Oh really. great. Seriously. And, and do you give uh, no, anything you want it to be? Anything or, I want it to anything be. Anything you want it to be. Because let me tell you guys the secret of producing a live 30-hour event, and I'm sure that we've got little producer Nate behind I'll the desk here that could share, is that there's too much. There's a lot of transition that has to happen, especially if you've got bands coming on and yeah, on stage, yeah. and you have to have some Something content be, okay. to fill like the sound check time. And so we were like, well, how can we make actual? Yeah, good like one use? or two minute like things or uh, five. Five. Oh, yeah, okay. Five, six, five to ten. Five ten to ten. Is the, yeah, five okay. is the minimum. Ten is the. Yeah, it's doable. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. So. Well, and if you have restrictions, I love restrictions. Like you five say, to ten uh, you have to five to ten minutes. If I think of any other restrictions, it has to be you know time. people with only you know. Blue clothing or something. <laughs> Everyone must be clothed there's gotta be a, in yellow. <laughs> there's gonna be like a Pee Wee Herman sort of magic word that you work in or something. No, I can I can do that. Ask an educator. Ask an, Ask educator. an educator. Oh right, right. Yeah, those guys who have advice on Alberta Street. Yeah, <laughs> free advice. Yeah, yeah. I'll educate you. Yes. So it doesn't have to be educational. It could be you know, whatever. Yeah. Edutain no. It could be edutainment. Edutainment. Yeah. Or and. Uh, oh no oh, yeah, problem. There you I know. Go. I'm a. I'm. We're, we're I move fast and talk fast. Here we go. So uh, you need to do this before you go sailing too. You're yes. Going sailing this summer. Yes, and I've never. I've been sailing twice, but my uh -huh. uncle has this schooner, this old 1930 schooner up in, in Camden, Maine, and he's like rebuilt this thing, and it's like a world ocean school. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna probably get on it before the kids get on it, which is actually sort of nice. So it's like and a learn. school, and he takes kids out. Yeah, it holds like 15 people. I think I have like 15 cabins, wow. and you learn how to sail, and everybody's got a job, and you got. I mean, everybody's gonna at some point steer the boat and. It should be awesome. Oh, It'll be an education. Really, yeah. really cool. But yes, it will be an education <laughs> Sorry. experience. It's all right. Yeah. We like the word education. I'm looking forward to it. I think you learn something about yourself when you sort of, it, you're, you're unplugging and yeah. you're, you know, um, and, and you're just having a lot of people. Concept, it's a real community as well, though. You're having, yeah. it, depending on each other, it would be probably scary and exciting for me. And so. Yeah. How old are the kids? You know, they won't be kids that I will be with. The kids are oh, okay. high school go. age, but I'm going to do it the first length. Like, it's all through the Great Lakes this summer, and okay. it's, it's called you know World Ocean School, and you can follow it online. It's really really interesting stuff he's done, and um, yeah, they uh, they're going to be going through the Great Lakes this summer, that's and I get really to do the first cool. half of it before they pick up uh, the kids. That is really, um, and that's what I'm looking to do. The sort wow. Of, yeah. So you've only sailed twice? Yeah, on a little, but you know, like in the last little, year, like <laughs> little itty bitty. Boat. Yeah, a 20 footer or something, you yeah. know. So wow. I'm excited. How long are you going to be gone? Uh, probably three weeks. He says I can stay on as long as I want. Three weeks on a boat with no. <laughs> yeah, and so I do actually hope I'm going to ask him if I can do some video work where you can talk to people and really sort of yeah. share. That's yeah. very cool. Are you going to make everyone act like a pirate while you do that? I only uh, there was a pirate yeah, talker. Yeah, yeah. Put me in the frame of mind. <laughs> I was like, oh look, pirate. Yeah, are you ready to share? Or, you know, <laughs> hold on. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just fell man overboard. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, I should. I want to ask questions? you a question. You well, because I we were talking before the camera about we how were. you got to the, what you're doing, and yes. was it through sort of a technical side or a media side, or was it sort of both? And yeah. you talked about the blog, and I am just looking at this conference, and I'm trying to like, this, there's this all this discussion about open source citizenship. Uh huh. What does that mean? So what does open, it mean? So uh, open source citizenship yeah, in, what does it in mean my to perspective. Be, to, to be an open yeah. source citizen. Yeah. So that means that you're using the open, but not just using. You're using the open source products. You're using the open source community, but right. you're you're giving back to it as well. You can't just go. I'm using open source. It makes me open source. Right. It means that you found some way to give back to the community as well. Okay. In, I could be wrong. This is my. That's my definition of. Oh, I'm, I'm getting a thumbs up though. Yeah. Um. So for instance, I don't great code, I don't create things, I create uh, content and stuff, and most of that gets then released under Creative Commons for use, and it goes back to 30 Hour Day, which was a project that everything that we recorded for it was released for open use, yeah. for people to raise money for charities. 
it's open source too. Right, and and I use WordPress, which is one of the, you know WordPress is like one of the mother of all open source. It's the big open source blogging. Right, and that and that just started when you, as because it was one of the first sort of blogging. It was, stuff. It, it was. It was big. It was big. Yes, it was. There, I mean, there are others that people use, like Blogger and stuff. But is it Drupal in on that? Is that like a people Drupal versus uh, I know WordPress? I about Drupal. Okay. I know Drupal exists. I know that Drupal is difficult <laughs> and makes people want to rip their hair out. I'm right. sure it's very good though, when so you learn how to use it. Okay. All right. Because my newspaper, we're going to go online this summer, change some things with our uh, site, and I it was WordPress. I heard was WordPress is the way to go. Okay. I'm not so just saying that because I'm a Portland endorsement. girl. Because everyone in Portland will tell you that, though. I mean, for like 90% of the people in Portland will be like, oh, no, WordPress, WordPress. you got to use WordPress. OK. You don't want to go another way. All right. You, just because if you want help with it, yeah. which you will, yeah. you want to be in Portland going, I need help with WordPress. Because everyone's like, let me help you. Let me throw help That's, that's what Selena said. It's yeah. that there's a bigger community, and that's the whole yes. idea. There's a huge community. And then you'll have an excuse yeah. to play hooky. It won't be even hooky. <laughs> and go to WordCamp in September. Oh, yes. WordCamp. WordCamp. WordCamp Portland. And we were talking about Justin Kistner earlier, uh -huh. who's held in uh, Web Trends, which is where Justin's working. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, oh, cool. See? Tiny, <laughs> tiny little world. <laughs> and is, is that kind of the theme of a lot of these the conferences, is, is finding you know, these people who are kind of isolated and finding ways for them to sort of make it smaller, the world, like the little tech world and you know, these you know, broadcasts? I think it's the opposite. I think it's kind of a way to make it bigger. OK. I don't think it's, I, I, I think it's not isolational at all. I think it's. No. Oh, Right. No, I mean, taking if you're feeling isolated, and these things oh, make you yes. do the opposite. Yes. Okay. Okay. I misunderstood. I misunderstood. Yeah. Well, WordCamp is basically just a conference, but it's just all about WordPress. Right. And they have them all over the world. Yeah. And that's we just have our. Cool. This will be our third one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Last year we had a. Last year Matt Mullenweg, the founder of. Right. Yeah. Came down and we taught him to make martinis right. on right. air. It was awesome. <laughs> it's fun. So you get to have a good time, and you get to do the WordPress -y stuff. I have one more question for you. Okay. Well, and this is, I, I, I don't ever let my students ask most questions, but I want to ask it anyway. Uh -huh. Who's the most interesting person here in this building? Who's the most person? Why is mostly person. what I'm interested in. And why? Yeah. Nate is going to answer himself. I see him pointing <laughs> yeah. over there. Right or or now, who is an interesting person? Right now, in this the room. most interesting person in this room is you because oh. you're the person that I'm interviewing. Oh, that is just the right answer, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I'm very good at that. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much thank for you. joining us, Scott. It was a pleasure to have you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh, like I was such a bore. I'm still Cami Chaos. That's not going to change later in the day. <laughs> but we've got Ryan Snyder now. Hey there. Why are you? Why are you? Okay. Why are you here? You tell me. You want to do the speaker part first or the Mozilla part first? Um, we, we can really do either. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of <laughs> here. I've been manning the Mozilla table today, so. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, know, I ignore vendors a lot of the time, so I'm like walking by. Do, do, yeah. Do not, oh. <laughs> Oh. I, know, I think you ignored me like the first time you went by, maybe. Did I? <laughs> it's all right. I forgive you. <laughs> so what, what is Mozilla doing here? Um, well, Mozilla is just, uh, well, it's, it's a primary sponsor for Open Source Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, Mozilla is, of course, an open source um, company uh, foundation. Uh, so, uh, so I have their sticker on my laptop. <laughs> as do I. <laughs> uh, so, so I think there are maybe six or seven uh, Mozillians here right now, um, some of which are uh, presenting in lightning talks, and others are just kind of here to give some open source love. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, swag over there. Seriously, there's like buttons and stickers yeah. and tattoos. Yeah. They can stick. You, I mean, the, that's not what the instructions say, but it works <laughs> effectively. Just don't lick the other people unless you have their permission, OK? Thank you. <laughs> and now, that, with that lovely transition, you're giving a talk. Um, I'm not talking, actually. I thought you said you were. No, no, no. Um, so, oh, no, um, Geek Speak. Geek Speak, yeah. So Geek Speak oh, is a, should, a, a, a company that I run. I need the educators <laughs> for that. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the umbrella company for all of my side projects. Yes, for wine geeks yep. and food geeks. Exactly. And 17 billion other things. And soon to be beer geeks. Beer geeks. And <laughs> exactly. So how's Geek Speak going, and how are the sites going? Um, good. They're they're doing well. Um, uh, they're they're definitely more of a, a side project than you know a startup or anything like that. Yeah. But um, uh, I I am 
so passionate about food that it, it's a really fun thing for me to do. I get to mm -hmm. geek out on the technical side, but more importantly, it kind of gives me an avenue to, uh, to to study more or to uh, to cook more. Mm -hmm. And those are those are and always good things. For it. I'm, no, <laughs> exactly. I'm doing this for my side projects. It's important. I just don't. I, it's not that I want to eat the good food. Right, right. I have to. Exactly. For the people. <laughs> so um, I, I'm doing a really fun um, project within Food Geeks right now, mm -hmm. where um, I. Uh, was really impassioned by watching the uh, Food Revolution, Jamie Oliver's television uh -huh. series that he had on. Uh, so, so the project that I'm working on now, which should launch either either late this week or early next week, yeah. uh, will be um, showing you all of the uh, seasonal veggies that are fresh in your state at any given time. So, um, so something that we typically do when we're searching for recipes is we go and look for a recipe and then go to the store. And and then what we don't really think about is is what what is fresh and in season so we might um it be in maybe march and pick out a blueberry cobbler recipe yeah. take that recipe to the store and realize that the blueberries are from chile yeah. right now and so if we start thinking um instead of recipe to ingredients rather start with the freshest best ingredients from local farmers and then make recipes out of those. Which then, is very much the way a lot of local restaurants do things. Exactly, exactly. And the flavor difference and the experience of actually, you know, maybe going and picking the blueberries yourself. Mm -hmm. are, it's it's phenomenal, a phenomenal change in your life. So what's in season here in Portland right now? Um, well, right now, uh, asparagus, uh, rhubarb. You know how you get, this is horrible, but you can always tell it's a season by checking with the burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can, it's horrible, because, yeah, all right. Okay. right. Asparagus, rhubarb. Yeah, fiddlehead ferns, mm -hmm. morels. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, there's some, morels at the farmer's market Yeah, today. And, then, and then we're just starting to get into the fruit season, where um, all of the fresh fruits from the Hood River area are starting to come into the... Strawberries are coming in. Exactly, strawberries and, and cherries. So, mm -hmm. so exciting times if you're culinarily inclined. Or if you just like to if eat. You just like to eat. <laughs> no. Either way. So what's going on? Anything new on Wine Geeks? Um, nothing much is new on Wine Geeks right now. Just, uh, um, just uploading my tasty notes when I have them. Um, but nothing really new feature-wise. Uh, I've been kind of just really focused on um, on little things for wine, uh, for food geeks, uh, but uh, but also really putting a, a good portion of my time right now into the um, contract work that I'm doing with Mozilla. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to ask one more. Blank Geeks, you said you were going to launch Beer Geeks. It's it's in it's, the cards at the moment, yes. <laughs> thing, we're in Portland, so it, it's interesting that Beer Geeks wasn't launched. I mean, we have other we do have other beer, yeah. but mostly it's beer finding. Right, right. Rather than beer consuming. Yeah. And beer ra so is it going to be the same? I mean, is it going to be a well, lot like Wine Geeks with the beer tasting notes and, and what goes with what? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, it would be um, beer pairing notes mm -hmm. uh, uh, or, or beer tasting notes. Um, second of all, it would be um, encyclopedia information about um, beer styles and about um, certain um, geeky words, you know, revolving around um, the world of beer. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, the ultimate, you know, kind of one of the, the dream goals is to integrate food geeks and wine geeks and beer geeks so that um, so that essentially when you're looking at a recipe, you might have like a wine pairing that would be recommended for it and a beer pairing that would be recommended for it. Mm -hmm. So trying to bring all of the sites full circle so that they can actually complement each other well, much in the way that uh, the pairing, you know, inherently yeah. complements. Yeah. Yeah. So I find it interesting. And I, I asked about the beer pairing. Um, Portland is the only city that I've been in where you will you can go to a restaurant and not only will they offer you a wine pairing, but um, often they'll offer you a beer, a beer pairing as well. Yeah. I mean, wine pairings anywhere you can go. <laughs> you can go get a wine pairing anywhere. It's mm -hmm. good that they do that. It's important <laughs> because if you don't know, I just like to drink it. <laughs> um, but the beer pairing, I think, is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I like that um, that there is you know um, approachability as well as sophistication mm -hmm. in both the the wine world and the beer world now. You yeah. know, uh, the, the beers are um, kind of up in the ante as far as you know really making some quality things instead yeah. of only you know keystone out of a can or, or what instead have of you. Just sitting in front of the drinking <laughs> out of the can. Right. 
<laughs> watching the football yeah. game. Yeah. Exactly. I'm familiar. And and also, you know, wine is is not as much of an untouchable beverage that um, that only uh, sophisticated uh, rich people you know Correct. consume and and know. Um, it's also something where the technology is, you know, we're seeing the screw cap bottles, yeah. and we're seeing. Um, and uh, this, don't be scared of the screw caps, okay? <laughs> it doesn't mean it's bad wine. It's it true. just means they're reducing the the chance that you're going to ever have a corked bottle. Exactly. I've listened. <laughs> I really have. She's a good student. I, I pay attention to these things. But um, the thing with wine that I think is interesting is that wine very much used to be. This is wine, and then this is wine that comes out of a box. Right. And and you either you got to drink that wine, or mm -hmm. you were a wine snob. Right. And you knew what you were talking about. And it's very much. I mean, we, you still have that. Mm -hmm. That's never going to go away. But there's very much a really comfortable middle ground uh, in the wine consuming business now. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, even wine from a box is now becoming quality wine. I know. You're seeing it's these weird. great wines coming out of Spain and out of Argentina yeah. that are are things that you know you might only want a glass of wine and mm -hmm. and you want to just keep that box of wine in your refrigerator mm -hmm. and so it rather than a box of wine in your refrigerator um, i currently don't okay. no but i i wouldn't ask. be ashamed if anyone opened up my refrigerator and and found that box whereas 10 years ago <laughs> when it was only you know fetzer and yeah. and some of the the lower tier um wineries uh that that would be a time where i probably would have been embarrassed yes yes but i'm not did anymore you, did you have one in there at that time uh you know i started out with uh with probably you know white zinfandel and chardonnay <laughs> so so yeah <laughs> so where when did you become a sommelier? Um, well, so he is. I'm not <laughs> just throwing that out there. Uh, so I earned the uh, sommelier certification in 2005. Okay. Uh, when I lived back in Ohio, like the 2003 to 2004 years, uh, that's when I uh, started becoming involved in study groups, um, tasting wines, studying different regions, uh, doing blind tastings. I had a number of um, friends who were in the restaurant industry, and so it was fun for me to kind of tag along with their studies, uh, and it gave me, I guess, the impetus to. Uh, to start Wine Geeks because I needed a place to store all of these wine notes that I, that I was gathering, all of these terms. And so Wine Geeks was just kind of a, a, a thing that just happened because I happened to be, well, uh, studying so much about wine and yeah, consuming so much wine, of course, it at that time too. <laughs> so yeah. Everyone, well, go, go ahead and throw out some snotty wine terms that no one understands. Um, so, well, to, to talk about um, screw caps, mm -hmm. uh, the reason, the primary reason for screw caps is so that we don't use um, corks in some of our um, younger, uh, younger wines, wines that need to be open in the one year to, to three year time frame. Um, and one thing that happens with, with some types of corks is that there's a, um, I guess it would be a bacteria that would be called a, a TCA or trichloroanisole. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens is when a wine cork is, is affected with, with TCA, um, as the wine is stored, it will, the bacteria from that cork will um, infect the wine. And when you hear a, a wine termed that it's corked, um, it, it's a wine that's been affected by this. And what happens is that when um, the sommelier at, your, um, at the restaurant pours you the wine and you swirl it and sniff it, um, the, first thing you, it's okay to <laughs> the first thing that you smell um, coming out of your, your glass is the smell of cardboard. And that, that is a sign that, you, that your wine is, is probably corked. Um, the, a secondary sign would be that when, um, when you have the wine in your mouth, you can typically taste the fruit up front, but then as, um, as you swallow, the finish um, or the, the lasting impression of the wine on your palate is, is that impression of cardboard rather than fruit, which you would typically expect. Mm -hmm. That was not snotty wine. You explained everything. I wanted you. There was a reason I wanted you to use snotty wine terms. There's a reason for it. Okay. But he never ever does it in snotty wine terms. He always makes sure everyone can understand what he's saying. And when he when he thinks it's not going to be understandable, he explains it. <laughs> what my question was, okay. you said uh, the beer snotty beer terms. I don't think that's exactly a quote, but something about beer language. Mm -hmm. What are some beer terms that I should be familiar with? Oh gosh, I, know, I only drink beer in Texas. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know that there are necessarily any beer terms that you should be um, associated with. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, the typical beer language is very, you know, very approachable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, the, 
when when people are really geeky, they'll approach um, the uh, the brewmaster about you know specific things like uh, like alcohol by volume or or some of the the, the different measurement. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. tools that they use to determine what the beer is going to actually um, taste like or how it was brewed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think um, I think as far as beer goes, the main thing I'm concerned about is how does it taste and okay. do you like it? Okay. <laughs> Generally, no. Gen generally no, but it, it kind of <laughs> depends like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was just me, right. I don't know, <laughs> you're asking me. Generally no. Generally no. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, if you're here at Open Source Bridge, go see Ryan over at the Mozilla desk. Are you here, what, how many, which portion of OS Bridge are you at? Because I didn't <laughs> well, see you there yesterday. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be just kind of around OS Bridge. So if I'm not in, in one of the sessions, then I'll probably be at the table. Okay. Yeah. And he'll ignore you. Yeah, probably. Or you can ignore him. It's fun either way. It's all good. But just remember, just because you're watching this, it doesn't mean he can see you. It doesn't work that way. We've th we're having problems with that. We're working on the technology. All right? Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Cammie. good to talk to you again. Yeah. And I'll see you all soon. There's silly people behind the production desk. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm still Cami Chaos. This is still OS Bridge. And this is Selena Deckelman, one of the founders of OS Bridge and database architect. Yes. Extraordinary. <laughs> I don't know if we needed that last part, but I think yes. We did. <laughs> I think we really, really did. So this is year two of Open Source Bridge. Yes. And this year we have moved venues. We're at the Portland Art Museum, which I find much more pleasant, actually. Oh, yeah. It's, it's kind of, beautiful. It's kind of calm but not in a like sleepy calm way it's just calm in a very like laid back much it feels much more open source to me cool than the convention center which was all like hustle and bustle and run around and cold and sterile yeah it definitely feels a lot more relaxed yeah. and i've had a couple people say that you know like in in this lounge area they feel like they have lots of space to think deep thoughts so you know mm -hmm. so i think yeah, we did our job there people wandering <laughs> around in toe socks <laughs> Happy as can be. There's wow, I coffee. Missed the toe socks. There were they're rainbow, rainbow striped. Toe oh, socks. nice. Yeah, um, there were cookies in there yesterday. Yeah, we're having cookies again today. Oh, you know what's really funny is I, I watched the ebb and flow of people in and out of the hacker lounge, and I went and used the ladies' room yesterday, and when I came back out, suddenly it was like swarm of people, <laughs> and I couldn't believe. I was like, why are there so many? Oh. Cookies. cookies. Yeah. Cookies. Oh, yeah. No, somebody got a really good picture of everybody kind of swarming around mm -hmm. down there yesterday that I saw. So, yeah, no, that was that was great. So cookies are not the impetus behind Open Source Bridge, though. <laughs> right. Let's recap for those who might not be aware, although if you're watching this, you probably are. Yeah, uh, right. Why we have the Open Source Bridge Conference. Sure, yeah. So um, the, the original idea that we had a couple years ago, Audrey and I um, talked about, is having a conference for open source citizens. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what we mean by that is a place for people to come together and talk about what it takes to create open source software. Um, not just the code, but also um, how people relate to each other, how we find each other, and then um, how, we, how we, yeah, fix things and make things together. So. Yeah. And that was a great thing about the keynote that we had this morning was uh, we invited uh, Lee Honeywell to come and uh, talk about hackerspaces and how hackerspaces, more and more of them are popping up all over the world. And she had this great, um, this great analogy. Uh, she called it uh, our September. Mm -hmm. um, that, that hackerspaces um, had had their September, which is which was kind of this joke um, in the old old Usenet days when September was when all of the um, new college kids got their oh, their yeah, yeah their Usenet accounts for the first time and started posting like you know their first you know Usenet posting. So she's saying that you know uh, December of 2007 was our yeah. our September for hackerspaces, which I think was a great great way to talk about how many more that we're getting and how people are just spontaneously creating them now. So hackerspace is a lot, it's like a co-working space for hackers. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And um, and they tend to be places where people collect, um, like in, in especially in Lee's case, in the hackerspaces she's associated with, um, they're places where people collect objects and, and things to make things, like they have a, uh, a laser cutter in her hackerspace. Um, uh, in the hackerspaces here in Portland, they've had like mills and lathes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, really kind of hardcore machinery to make things. So, um, so yeah, so a lot of the spaces are like that. Some of them are just, you know, somebody's basement where people get together on laptops and, and write software together, but many of them are, you know, they've got this like equipment that they're making things with, and that's, yeah, it's really cool, cool movement. And we have a very, very temporary hacker space. 
Yes. Behind us, we've got Hacker Lounge. Take two. Because <laughs> um, last year I was at the top of the Hilton. Yes. And w didn't it used to be a restaurant and they weren't using it anymore? Yeah, yeah. So they had this great like panoramic view of um, of the city up there. It was beautiful space. And so this beautiful year, space. yeah. So this year, um, the uh, Pam allowed us to keep this uh, first floor of the Mark Building open all night, so people can come and go. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't know that it was open all night. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yep. Yep. That is absolutely fantastic. You can't go upstairs, though. Just the Hacker's Lounge. <laughs> and the thing that I found really interesting when I found out that you guys were doing the keynote from the Hacker's Lounge, I thought that was a really inventive use of space. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to, um, yeah, it's nice to kind of mix those things up and you know have people down here early in the morning. And yeah, no, I've, I've actually, um, I've actually really enjoyed having this extra space down here, and I've seen a lot of people making use of it during the day. So, yeah. um, and I'm going to be here late tonight, so we'll, I'll experience the late night hacker lounge as well. I, I know that you've got some work that you have to go do, but real quick, we'll ignore the stuff that's already happened. But uh, anything uh, this afternoon that you're really excited about, and something tomorrow you're really excited about, because Friday we all know what there is to be excited about. Yeah. Um, well, of course. I mean, there's there's a ton of talks that are are amazing. Um, I'm I'm looking forward. Actually, the Postgres group mm -hmm. is uh, having a birds of a feather session. We invited um, user groups from around the city to come this evening and make use of the space. Very cool. So uh, so that's going to happen. We're also going to have a MySQL boff competing. So you know, we'll we'll either unite or fight. Destroy I don't know. Each other. <laughs> it's going to be bloody. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, tomorrow morning, and and actually all day, folks from uh, the city of Portland are going to be here. Um, and Mayor Sam Adams is kicking off um, the morning, uh, with talking about the Civic Apps and program. He did a keynote last year as well. He did, yeah. So he's he's uh, making it, uh, he's reprising it. So um, uh, he's going to talk about you know the city's efforts to open up um, these data sources that they've had. Um, a lot of it associated with PortlandMaps.com, which is an amazing resource. Uh, but they've taken all these data sources, they're putting them out there, and they're hoping that uh, folks that are at the conference and around the city will come and. Uh, find innovative new ways of using that data. And if you're watching this live or even like sometime on, on a, it's Wednesday, right? Yeah, it yeah. is Wednesday. On Wednesday, the <laughs> Still second, Wednesday. Uh, we'll, we'll have the live stream of the mayor's keynote tomorrow morning. Yeah, so great. Good. All right, Selena, thank you so much. And I'll let you yeah, thank done, you so much, Cammie. Thanks for coming on again. Yeah. Thanks for letting us come play. Yeah, no, I'm so glad you guys came again this year. Awesome, thank you. All right. To point and counts for me, and I don't like counting. <laughs> then we've got Nate over here, and Nate, he counts. No, he doesn't. He does the opposite. Cody counts. Nate points. It's very useful. I'm still Cami Chaos. This is how I'm going to introduce every interview. I'm still Cami Chaos. We're still at OS Bridge. This is OS Bridge day two, and we're here with Hal Pomeranz. Way to go, Cami. Yay, me. Woo! Uh, at, go, Cami. At Hal underscore Pomeranz on Twitter. What do you want to talk about? Do you of want to course, talk they don't talk? know how to spell my last name, oh, wait, so, so that, that's it. not really helpful, Cammy. Let me, me. P-O-M-E-R-A-N-Z. <laughs> Z as in Z. Z, please. Right now, run to your Twitter yeah, application. I, yeah, right now. Follow. He might just say something brilliant uh, as soon as he's done with the interview because he's not allowed to tweet on camera. You have, what do you want to talk about? We could talk about the comfy couch because that was. Oh, yeah, you know, so like, what's up with the comfy couch, right? I mean, there's a great couch all, up in St. John's. You go all the way upstairs in the yeah. St. John's room. Huge, big red velvet couch upstairs covered in bags. Yeah. Someone, everyone had their bags on I, it. I know, like, people aren't sitting in it. They're actually just using it for storage, Correct. right? And I was like, this is not a storage device. It's a big, comfy couch. I was up there to see a talk. A really, that was going to be a great talk. That was good, yeah. It was going to be the that talk. That we totally missed the fact that it had actually been rescheduled. Right. And, you know, there was, so so that was, this is going to be the talk of the entire Open Source Bridge conference. And we sat there waiting for it to start for 20 minutes. But at least as a result of that talk not being scheduled, we established that the curtains up there, the window coverings, were not, in fact, chain mail. They oh. were, yeah. So. They're, they're, you know, mock chain mail. They're sort not actually mail. usable for battle purposes. I, I can't believe anybody's going to actually watch this interview. They you will. Know. People will. But there's someone watching it right now. I mean, there's probably like two people, but someone's watching. They're like, why the hell? Why the heck are they talking about the couch? You know, you? who cares about the window? Because covering? we're talking about Open Source Bridge. Yeah. And these are things that are upstairs at Open right. Source Bridge. But right now, we're going to talk. Let's talk about. Well, your I, I mean, but look, I mean, this is sort of you know Open Source Bridge, right? I mean, it's yeah. a gathering of the tribes, it's right? It's the way and it works, and this it, is what we're interested in. Right. Right. So and that's it's, the way Open Source works. We're interested in it. Let's do something. Right. That's how the projects get started in the first place. Because it's not like you're making big money off of open source and you know at the initial stages at least 
you're not ever really. But you know, at the initial stages, it's it's all this is what I want to do, and what we wanted to do was find out whether or not we could sit on the big comfy couch. Yeah, but, but I, wanted, I noticed the big comfy couch is not here. So. It's not. I should get someone to bring it down for me. I mean, yeah. It's up in the St. John's room. Top floor, it's the only room up there. If you guys want to bring it down for me, we could do interviews. I'll interview whoever brings the couch to me. All right, so just saying, I'm putting that out there. It's a very comfortable couch. They'll have to reset the camera height, but I think it'll be okay. Now we're <laughs> we gonna have talk the technology. To, we do. We're going to yeah. talk about house talk now, even though right. he doesn't seem to want to. Command line kung fu. Yeah. Go. Go. Hey, uh, so uh, <laughs> what can I say? You know, like I, I. Um, I teach for SANS, and, and I teach Unix for SANS, so I, I um, end up uh, being in rooms with lots of people with all different levels of proficiency mm -hmm. uh, on the command line, and I see them taking these like really roundabout solutions to get their work done. And so um, it started with uh, just uh, a collection of tips that I would sort of give out to my students uh, at the beginning of class. Um, and um, then I found um, Ed Skotis, who also teaches for SANS, and he was kind of doing the same thing for Windows, he was like really into the Windows command line, and he actually did a talk called Windows Command Line Kung Fu, and I thought, well, that's that's messed up. I mean, like, there's a, somebody's doing a talk called Windows Command Line Kung Fu, and nobody's done Unix Command Line Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Ed, Ed kind of shamed me into, into doing the initial uh, Unix Command Line Kung Fu talk. And then um, we started a, a blog about it, so we actually have, like, have a weekly command line um, a uh, column called Command Line Kung Fu, obviously enough, mm -hmm. dot com. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so like uh, we'll, we'll pick a problem. Sometimes they get suggested by readers, and sometimes uh, we just come up with them ourselves. And Ed will do the solution in, in Windows, and I'll do the solution in Unix. And it's kind of neat, because you get that kind of Rosetta Stone effect, where you get mm -hmm. to see like how each operating system deals with you know, command line craziness. Um, and we've recently added a, another writer, uh, Tim Medine, who does PowerShell now, because that's sort of like the new Windows shell. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's been really fun. I mean, Ed and I are just like, wow, I, I wish we could find a way to do nothing but write command line kung fu, because we will do command line kung fu to, you know, in expense of like all our other projects, you know, the ones we're actually getting paid for and stuff like that. So it's been really, really well, that's fun. That's the problem with having a side project that you love. And you love all your side projects, because you wouldn't do it if you didn't, because yeah. it's a side project. Right. Yeah. So. so you said uh, earlier when you were teaching the class, you were watching people go in completely roundabout ways to try to do something. Yeah. So is this just about teaching people the, the most straightforward, the simplest way? Well, I, I think it's part of it's that. I mean, part of it's just like sort of giving people leverage to like, you know, be better on the command line. So, mm -hmm. so that the command line becomes a tool for them and not an impediment. Mm -hmm. right? some, a lot of people are still kind of scared of the command line. Yeah. Um, what is it going to do? Um, and then part of it, I think, no. was mm. kind of helping people develop a, a, a mindset about how the command line works, just like thinking about how the command line solves problems mm -hmm. so that they could then come up with their own solutions, you know, just like sort of get into the mindset. It's, it's just like learning a programming language. I mean, the Unix command yeah. line is a programming language. So you have to, but you have to wrap your head around what the language developers intended as the the way the programming language works and how you solve problems in that programming language. So um, so part of it's that. Um, and I think the talk that I gave here was much more that. It was, I, I, I picked a bunch of sort of harder problems from that we've been dealing with re recently on the blog and kind of worked through the thought process of how we Give got to them. Give me uh, an example of the simplest problem that you can solve and then a more complicated one. Um, simplest problem, uh, one that comes up over and over again on the blog is how do I kill processes based on criteria blah, right? Mm -hmm. So cr criteria blah may be I want to kill all the processes owned by a particular user because I just want to get them the hell off my machine, yeah. right? Um, that's simple, I mean, that's just, I mean, there's a command for that. You know, there's an app for that, it's called pkill, and you, know, you pkill minus u and then the username. But you know, one of the th questions we got recently was, how do I kill a process based on the starting time of the process? It turns out that so just the duration that yeah, like how long it's you know sort of elapsed time in the process, right? I want to kill all the processes that that were more than ten hours old or something like that. You know, it turns out that's really hard in Unix, uh, well, it embarrassingly like it should, hard. It seems like right? that should be simple. Should be simple. And kernel keeps track of process start times. You mm -hmm. should be able to figure this out. But there aren't any tools 
easily built into the operating system that externalize this information in such a way that you can kind of like build it into your shell script to like mm -hmm. do this. You have to do this like crazy hacked up thing with uh, PS, like strange options to PS and awk and sed and you know you like create this like incredibly complicated He's blob of say code. That I understand now. So yeah, it's cool. It's I'll okay. follow along. Yeah. So, but I mean, you end up having to glue together a whole bunch of different pieces into this big, humongous recipe to do something that's like really simple. Um, and it's also embarrassing that Windows can do this. Like, like, that's, yeah, yeah. It's just like built in, that right? Is a little yeah. It's like there. I, I always hate stuff like that. It doesn't happen much on the blog, but you know. Anyway, so yeah, that, that was the day that Ed felt good about the blog because I yeah. didn't like totally kick his ass. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, so like just things like that. And, and but like the process of of building up that big blob of code required a whole bunch of little functional components. I mean, that's sort of the Unix command line magic, right, is you take these little functional components and you plug them all together. So yeah, it was like, you know, a simple command like PS that got, you know, dumped into another command for some output massaging and then, you know, a little more massaging and more massaging. So I, I don't know. I mean, and, and so sort of teaching that thought process and sort of building it up step by step mm -hmm. is, is interesting because, it, it, you know, then people can go to apply that that yeah. sort of process to their own problems. So. I can't believe you can't I believe Windows will. It, I know. It just it's, seems like fundamental to me. It's been running for this long. We need to shut it down. That, yeah, exactly. Oh, no. It's taking up too yeah. many resources. Get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. All right. Um, www.deer-run.com slash ahal. Tilde. Oh, tilde. It looks like an A. I'm just saying. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Sharpie. It okay, I'm like not a, sure how you're getting an A out of that. Really? Can we get it? It looks like an A. I don't think we can get it close up. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take a photograph okay, of it. We'll, we'll post just, it up on the Strange Love Live website. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's like Dr. Tongue's 3D house of What am I of, doing? Is it in the right here. place? Yeah? All right. I think it looks like a little A. It's got the little swooshy tail on the end. Do you see? Seriously? Okay. It looks like an okay. A. Okay. Would you... Okay, but, 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 but Cammy, like there's an A right next to it that you can use as a comparator. I thought maybe clearly... you forgot that there was an A there and you squished it in. Yeah, all right, Cammy, whatever. Yeah. What's that site? <laughs> that site is uh, sort of my own personal website where I post um, all the stuff that I write about, including, by the way, the slides for my presentation here at OS Bridge will be up there just as soon as I actually managed to turn them into a PDF and move them up there. Um, but uh, Excuses. the talk that I gave at last OS Bridge and, and different command line kung fu talks that I've given other places are also at that site. So deer-run.com tilde, it's a tilde, tilde, tilde Hal. So, or just Google my name, Hal Pomeranz, and it's the first link that comes up. When was your talk? Uh, right after the keynote yesterday. Okay. And now you're here. What are you looking forward to doing for the rest? Are you here for the rest of the conference? Absolutely. What are you looking forward to for the rest of the conference? Um, and don't just say the unconference day because that's too easy. Everyone likes the unconference day. I, I mean, I like the unconference day, but I, I like it. So what I found, what I discovered at the last OS Bridge conference, sort of too late to, to do anything about it then, but the best presentations for me to go to mm -hmm. are the ones I know absolutely nothing about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like going into sessions like completely blind and just learning something uh, like totally brand new. What was the session we were trying to attend yesterday? Let's see. Oh, called, that was the... No, where is it? This, yeah. Yeah, how to give away everything, make no money, and still win. We still have a chance to go to that. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do you know what time it is? I need the guy with the uh, Android app to come tell me. Yeah, I, I have it in my little pocket schedule, which you didn't let me bring on camera, so shame on you. Hmm. Yeah, you, you should tell me. I'm just hoping it's not against Dr. Normal's talk, which I must attend in the afternoon. Because, you know, I got to. He's talking about 30-hour day. Let's have another 30-hour day mention. 30-hour day. So there's this thing July called 30-hour day, third. apparently. I, you, know. you don't know about 30-hour day? No, I know 30-hour day. Because... It's happening soon. Giving you a hard time. Yeah, I so, know. So yeah, so I, I mean, you know, like talks like that. I mean, that just seem, you know, completely random. Yeah, something that something that you won't, you don't. Yeah, expect. right. Because I, 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 I don't know. It, it's bad for me to like sit in on a talk that, that I already need to correct that you're going. To yeah, or that that I just you know like I, I know something about already. Um, I don't think like I you, you know. The, the goal here is to like get a lot of knowledge and talk to a lot of people and 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 find stuff to sort of enrich 
what you're already doing. And yeah. if you just like stick in the channel that you're already doing if stuff. You crawl into your own little box and yeah. carry around with you. And it's just yes. like, okay, you're just in a rut. I mean, uh, the, the, the interesting thing about this is like all the different people um, hanging out and, mm -hmm. and talking to people you, you never would get a chance to talk to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why limit yourself to stuff you know about? Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Hal. Say goodbye to the people. Say goodbye. Bye, people. Bye.